Hello, my name is James Blackman with Enterprise IoT Insights and RCR Wireless. Today we are talking reverse logistics with Ingram Micro and the, the revolution that is kind of happening in it to bring greater efficiencies to the discipline and to improve service and profit, profitability through the, through the whole supply chain. I'm joined today by Alex Paskoff, who is Senior Vice President and Managing Director for Ingram Micro's Commerce and life cycle services business. Alex has been in the tech and telecoms industry for 30 years and with Ingram Micro for 20. Uh, I'm also joined by Mark Browser, who is Vice President for Reverse Logistics and Repair at Ingram Micro. Mark has been in the sector for 20 years, both on the carrier and the supplier side. He has spent uh, the past 15 focused specifically on this reverse logistics and repair sector. So thank you both for joining us. Thanks for having us. Glad to be here. So Alex, let's start with, you know, Ingram Micro's commerce and life cycle services business, which I understand is essentially the reverse logistics and repair part of that. Talk to me about that and what you've got going and, you know, I guess what you're excited about. Yeah, well, Ingram Micro's commerce and life cycle services is really an end to end supply chain solution on both the forward logistics side, all the way through reverse logistics and repair. So if you think about a, a closed loop within um, the, the industries that we serve, mobility is a big one of them and reverse logistics and repair is the closed loop in that supply chain. Okay. And Mark, you know, you, you've been in this game a time as well. And, and really ever since, I guess there were enough mobile phones out there to to make recycling and repair kind of an urgent and commercial exercise. You know, I understand as well, you also ran the, one of the largest phone repair businesses in North America. So just tell us what actually goes into reverse logistics. Well, reverse logistics is always product coming backwards. So anything that's gone to retail, gone to a store, gone to a customer that needs to come back kind of falls under the umbrella of reverse. And from there, with all of the things going on, it's about value preservation and increasing the value of assets as it moves backwards. And so we can talk about that as we get into this, but there's several ways to do that. Um, but what you're noticing is customers are holding on to devices longer. And so the value of keeping those devices in good working condition becomes more important. And so that accentu accentuates some of the need for some of these after uh, market services relative to repair, refurbishment, grade skipping, and the like. Okay, and 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 you mentioned there that you know clearly the 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 smartphone market is obviously changing as devices get kind of higher spec and, and more expensive, and and customers perhaps don't want to or or simply they can't upgrade every year. I mean, those cycles are getting longer, right? And I suppose you know as the market is is saturated with smartphones and as margins are squeezed, you know, and carriers have to pay for expensive 5G networks. I guess all of this puts a, puts a burden on the logistics side. Alex, just if you can talk about some of those kind of trends in the background and how things are changing. Yeah, well, James, I think you touched on it with respect to contributors to the extended um, upgrade cycle, but I do think we're coming into a bit of a hyper cycle with the deployment of 5G. Um, it's not just um, the price point that is a governor on upgrades. Sometimes it's just technological advancements, whether it's in the device or the network itself. So I think with 5G coming and we'll see an acceleration certainly in 2021 um, and clearly through 2022. And I expect with that, um, an acceleration of the upgrade cycle for sure. Okay, and, I, and, and I've seen stats that say that, you know, the, the, the kind of secondary market for handsets is growing at a faster rate than the, what you might call the primary market, I guess. Mark, what is, is the impact on consumers, you know, and of course on carriers as well, on, on mobile operator, operators, which are funding all of this kind of, this march of technology, if you like, you know, with 5G rollout you know, at when, you know, the, the, the struggle is nothing is really getting any more expensive and everything is still £30 a month or £50 a month in, in, in the consumer market, at least. Just, just talk around that dynamic, if you can. 
Sure. I think Alex uh, kind of hit it, which is 5G is dri driving a lot of dynamic into the marketplace um, and is going to force the carriers to get value all the way through their supply chain, which is kind of what Ingram is really leaning in towards. But as, as it relates to the 5G piece of it, the, the funding requirements for, for that across all of the carriers are tremendous. And so they're looking for new streams of value creation and, and there are really no sacred cows relative to where they can look to either find new revenue streams through liquidation of devices that are coming back or through saving money through re, recapturing value in devices or improving devices. But one of the big shifts we've seen in the marketplace is a higher um, amount of devices sold in the secondary market by the carriers. And so, as you mentioned earlier, uh, there's a drive for secondary life cycles for these devices. So if a carrier subsidi subsidizes a device initially and they can get that same device back into a recurring revenue stream without incurring a second subsidy, that's a tremendously power financial incentive for them to do so. So we're seeing a lot of new and creative ways that carriers are exploring to reintroduce uh, certified pre-owned devices back into their networks. Okay, so so where 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 does that leave us? I guess I mean with that kind of backdrop, with you know where the market's saturated, the margins are ever tighter, you know. You know, and you mentioned there there is a there is this there is this increasing interest in this secondary phone market. What does that mean for the for the discipline you're engaged with here? What what, what is it? What is the future, if you like, of of reverse logistics? You know, according to Ingram Micro, Alex, perhaps you can address that. Yeah, I mean, I think the the future is extremely bright because if you think about it, while the upgrade cycle may be expanding, the life cycle of these devices is extensive, right? Um, I think about it a lot along the lines of the automobile industry, right? M millions and millions of new cars are sold every year. Millions and millions of used cars are sold every year. And I think the same will be true in the smartphone environment. Uh, we'll have new phones that need to be, that will get returned and need to be repaired and refurbished. And we'll have used phones that will need to be monetized and resold and redistributed perhaps two, three times uh, in their life cycle. So I think the activity in this domain, on top of just the sustainability overlay on top of that is tremendous. Okay, so it, it, it feels like a, you know, obviously an increasingly busy market and it feels a bit like we're getting to the heart of the matter here. Um, Mark, talk about what Ingram Micro is doing here. You've got something called REV, I believe, or REV, just put me right there. What is it? What will it achieve and what will it kind of mean for the market? Yeah, so Rev is uh, kind of Ingram's start at rever revolutionizing reverse logistics. And so the, this industry has not had a ton of innovation on the reverse side in recent years. And so Ingram set off to change that with significant investments in both people and technology those two things come together in what will be our first deployment of a piece of technology that's Ingram uh, invented and Ingram operated, which will be an automated at scale solution to both functionally test and cosmetically grade devices at a scale that the marketplace has never seen before. So Rev will increase current efficiencies by over a thousand percent in the space. We're talking about processing nearly a thousand phones an hour of any make, of any model, of any software variant. Um, and, and to be able to put that kind of scale behind that level of automation brings tremendous efficiency um, to both carriers and OEMs alike. Okay, wow, so a thousand devices an hour you know, and I've, I've, I've had, a, I had a look at this, uh, you know, and, you, and you're talking about like a, I believe a 500% improvement in, in kind of processing times or thereabouts, perhaps, you know, just, I mean, that seems from the outside, you know, quite, quite remarkable, really. Alex, just give us a bit more flavor on that. What does it mean, I guess, for, you know, for customers, for both end users and, you know, the, the market that you're serving, the, the phone retailers and the, 
and the carriers and this kind of stuff? Yeah, I think really the retailers, the carriers, the manufacturers are the ones that will see the most benefit because it's an exponential increase in efficiency. Um, as Mark mentioned earlier, you know, the asset monetization is a huge piece of managing the reverse supply chain. So the sooner you can get the inventory in and disposition and back out in the marketplace is a big deal. So when we can do it that efficiency compared to the historical market, it's really revolution revolutionizing what's been happening over the course of the last 10 to 15 years. And just, just uh, I mean, just kind of lastly, just, I mean, is this up and running now? Is it live now? Is it coming 2021? And is it, presumably it's an in Ingram micro uh, service you're offering. Just, just give me some, some- It's uh, an Ingram micro service. It will be live and launched in 2000, early 2021. Okay. All right, well, look, I think that's probably about all we have time for, but you know, I'd like to thank Alex and Mark for joining us. Yeah, it's been fascinating to hear something of the of the change that's happening in this in this space, this reverse logistics space, and of what you're doing there with with this rev proposition. So, so thank you very both very much. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, James. Thanks for Thanks having for us. Having us. The future of mobile diagnostics is now. This is state-of-the-art mobile reverse logistics on any model and any form factor. Improving processing time by 500%. Cosmetic grading and 100 functional tests in four minutes. 740 phones per hour, 5 million devices per year. Don't get left behind. Thank you.